Hello everyone, and today's tutorial is going to be a little bit different. It's not going to be a step-by-step -step read out the manual type idea. It's going to be a work through of a project of a DeLorean DMC-12. And the reason I'm doing this is because it's a bit of more interesting than step-by-step uh, -step instructions. And it's a great model of a great car, at least I think so. And hopefully it'll be a little bit more interesting, a little bit more engaging than just the basic stuff. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to viz-people.com slash free hyphen stuff and download the DeLorean model. It comes with a Peugeot as well and it comes in three formats. Uh, the dot .max format for 3ds Max or the modern 3ds Max uh, complete with V-Ray um, but it also comes in the old 3DS format and also .obj. And .obj is what I'm going to be using today because, to be honest, it's probably more common. Uh, Maxwell will import OBJ and 3DS, but um, at least in Mac, it only imports 3DS in 32-bit mode, so I'm going to use OBJ. Right, so, open up Studio. This is my layout, and literally just go to Open and the file you want is vpc underscore free underscore zero one dot obj and open it up and this is what you'll get and I'm going to zoom out with the uh, scroll wheel and hold down alt and left click to orbit around my object and first things first it is huge the scale is wrong uh, many many reasons for this probably just a simple decimal point issue or whatever but um, if I select for example the body you can see up here in the top left of the window uh, XB box, YB box and ZB box are quite big and these are all uh, dimensions in meters so the car is actually pretty huge at the moment half a kilometer long nearly so uh, the first things first is to actually change that because in Maxwell your models do need to be in real world dimensions otherwise they're not going to render properly and the easiest way to um, do the whole thing all at once is I'm going to scroll up in my objects window, uh, select the first one, go down to the bottom, hold shift, select the bottom one, right click, group or command G on Mac and group name I'm just going to leave as group just because I it, there's only going to be one group and then select the group and then object parameters scale X is going to be 0 0.01 in all of these values, tab between them Point zero one in all scale x y z, and then right click center scene, and then select the body again, and now you can see it's uh, one point eight meters wide, point eight six meters high, and you know considering it doesn't actually reach the floor, that's fine, and um, just a little over four meters long. So that's now the proper scale of a, a car. I don't know if it's the exact s scale of a DeLorean DMC twelve, but you know what the hell. Okay, the next stage, or at least the next stage that I'm going to do, is to um, select individually all of these different uh, components and actually rename them. Now, I don't actually have to do that, but it's purely for my peace of mind that um, I really don't like, or I don't want the names of these um, components and these objects to be just uh, some generic name. I'd like them to be the name that they actually are. So, I'm going to go through one by one and select them in the object manager press return and then literally just key in what you want it to be called so these are the bumpers press return again down return windows return down return and I'm going to go through these and rename all of my components for some of them for example the um, the backs of the headlights the uh, reflectors if you like it's actually quite difficult to see um, especially from you know zoomed out you just kind of get this suggestion that there is something selected um, but what you can do is select or click the little um, icon to the left of the lot the little dot of the headlights and uh, it will hide it basically so it becomes invisible so you can now see that the headlight backs uh, what I've called them are definitely um, what I've selected. Once again I've actually got something selected here, the um, fourth component if you like, which um, at first glance isn't actually um, anything at all, it's not selecting anything and even if I right click and send a selection it's still not um, anything, nothing showing up as yellow so what I can do is um, hide the headlight glass, 
select it again and it is indeed the light bulbs and what you could do actually is to once you've uh, renamed anything and find out what it is is to automatically just kind of instinctively hide it so that it'll get it out of the way and um, you know that anything that's hidden is already named and so you won't need to hide anything in order to get to whatever it is you now need to rename. Another tip for when you're working with models like this, um, take for example the currently selected component, um, there's nothing obviously showing up and uh, even if I right click and send a selection it's going to the rear license plate but it doesn't actually kind of look highlighted at all, um, it's not showing up as a yellow um, edge so I'm not entirely certain um, what's going on in this case, what's exactly what's selected, it could be something absolutely tiny that's not showing up or it could be something um, with very small polygons, it could be an accident, that's the main thing to look out for with models like this. So I'm just going to hide it from the scene and indeed it does confirm your suspicions that it is a rear license plate and it's just not showing up all that well. Okay, now so everything's renamed and everything's hidden and a quick way to bring everything back is to hide the entire group and unhide the entire group. So now I've got everything uh, happily renamed and I know what everything is so if I need to get to anything specific like the exhaust click on the name and there it is. And second thing I would like to do with all of these which uh, is a necessary step um, and you can do this at any stage really but I like to get it out of the way um, just because otherwise if you forget it's kind of embarrassing. Um, if I zoom in nice and close on the body here and on the tire as well you'll see in these curved surfaces um, the shading is uh, very it goes from one solid color to another instead of a nice smooth shade around and that's called the fong and what is happening is that these individual polygons are being shaded individually as opposed to being considered part of a greater whole if you like and the shading is very rough if you want to call it like that and whereas it should be a nice smooth shape and the ways of getting around this is either to use a higher poly count but that's really unnecessary in this case or we can use fong shading and what fong will do is it will it will make the shape look as though it is nice and smooth so if I select the body as an example and in object parameters go down and um, Maxwell calls it smoothing I call it fong whatever um, the default is at 60 degrees and what that means is um, these polygons will have to be at more than 60 degrees to one another for it to actually break the shading and for the smoothing to make it appear as though it, it is in fact you know a very a sharp edge as opposed to a smooth edge so uh, that's the default and if you uh, I'll leave it at that and just say recalculate and if I deselect it now you can see it's nice and smooth in contrast with the tire which is still not um, smooth and it's still broken up into individual polygons so as a simple way of making sure everything is nice and smooth select um, everything and I'm going to actually change the smoothing uh, I'm going to use 44 degrees it tends to be a little bit better than you know a generic number of 60 because you know 44 is so if anything's at more than 45 or more than 44 degrees i.e. 45 degrees or more it will appear harsh and um, unsmooth as opposed to smooth so uh, just recalculate all of that and then hopefully everything should be nice and smooth but still you know if it's it's not going to try and smooth absolutely everything um, as an example of smoothing which has gone too far I've zoomed in on the DMC logo on the front of the car and if I select this it's actually part of the body which uh, may cause us difficulties later on but for now I'm going to leave it as it is and um, if I change the smoothing up you can see at the moment the smoothing is working very nice it's quite a low poly logo and um, you know it's nice and sharp as it should be but if I change the smoothing up to 179 and then recalculate you can see it's actually giving us uh, some issues at the edges. It's trying to smooth it out, but there simply isn't enough geometry to actually do it effectively. So it's giving us these artifacts right on the edges of the logo um, because it's a 90 degree edge, a 90 degree angle, which it's trying to uh, smooth into one continuous shape or form, and it can't do it. So uh, just change that back to 44 degrees again. And everything's nice and crisp as it should be. Okay, so now everything's 
nice and smooth. Another stage that is not essential but is good practice if you like um, is to make sure that everything is uh, all the objects in the scene are assigned into groups. At the moment I've got one group for the entire scene but what I'd like is to have everything which has the same material um, has its own group. If there's more than one object which has exactly the same material in it then it's sensible to group those objects together so you can edit and work with them a little more easily. You simply apply one material to the group and it will be applied to all the objects within it instead of um, assigning materials individually. In this case there's only about 40 objects so it's not going to be a huge time saver but with bigger models obviously it is pretty invaluable. So first of all I've got to get these objects out of the group. If I would simply um, right click and remove the group obviously that gets rid of the entire thing so I can't do that. So what I need to do is select the top one scroll all the way down to the bottom, select the bottom one and click and drag down and it will actually ungroup them all just simply take them out of the group and then I can get rid of that group. And then what I want to do is for uh, objects which have the same material I can quickly and easily select them in the viewport hold shift and select another one and then right click group or command G group name and um, tires okay and there we go our tires are now grouped and again I'll hide them so you know get them out of the way so I know that I've done them and then simply go around the rest of the vehicle with anything which is going to have the same material and group them. Okay, so this is the car as it kind of currently stands. Anything that's not in a group I think is going to have its own material and it's pointless um, grouping it because it's not going to save me any time. And everything that's grouped uh, I think will share materials um, and if it if it wouldn't literally share materials in the real world, it will share materials um, for me because you know, for example, the um, headlight bulbs I'm going to make entirely reflective because you know there's no point having them as actual bulbs. I don't want the headlights on, so you might put them in the reflectives group. I might move them up to the glass group and make them transparent, which would be a bit more realistic. But I might not like the look of it. And the point is that. Uh, instead of having to apply material to an object I can simply move it to the group which has the material applied to it it does save quite a bit of time later on okay I think the time has come to uh, properly get started with materials and so on and first of all what I want to do is kind of get a grasp of you know what exactly I'm looking at so I'm going to quickly set up um, a nice little uh, scene if you like uh, or the render settings. So in the environment tab I'm going to change my type to sky and change it from sky to sky dome turn off the sun and uh, quickly fire that see what it looks like. So there you know you've got my basic um, car with basic uh, default material um, just to give me a hint of what exactly I'm looking at. Okay, for my materials, etc., it's going to be a mixture of mainly wizard materials, but also possibly some downloaded materials from the uh, MXM gallery from Maxwell Render Resources. So, um, at any stage along the way where I need to do that, then I will link to the material. Um, but, you know, it won't be anything special, is what I'm trying to say. It's just going to be um, all the materials should be accessible to anyone. Okay, well this is a DeLorean so we should really start with the brushed stainless steel body. Design wise and engineering wise maybe it wasn't the best choice but it gives it a very very distinctive look and I, um, I still love it for it. So right click in the materials window and new material. Double click to open the material editor and wizards, metal and there isn't a stainless steel option but iron is practically steel. Steel is just iron and carbon um, and stainless steel is a little bit of aluminium as well. So what I'll probably do is play around uh, you know, with these settings. That's what fire is for. You play around with the settings, you learn um, exactly what you need. Uh, roughness, it is pretty rough. Let's start with 50% and see where that gets us. Okay, um, change my preview scene. I like stage one. Refresh that. Is that what I want? Well, I don't really know. So I'll apply it to the car and see what happens. If I want to apply the material to uh, the, the car now without actually kind of 
I can do it in a variety of ways. Easy switch, it's just that. You know, drag and drop it from the materials window to the um, objects window. It's more accurate than dragging and dropping onto the viewport. I could, for example, you know, click on here and drag and drop it over to here, but as you can see, it's using a bounding box um, kind of recognition method. And at the bottom, it does say apply material to object body or apply material to object black trim or apply material to object bumpers, but I always find it's more accurate just to click it um, in the objects managers. But it's a common mistake that I see is that people kind of uh, just drag and drop it onto, you know, kind of blindly just go, Nuh, and it turns out the wrong one. Actually, I got it right, so I just kind of deliberately do it wrong. There we go. Deliberately applied it to the wrong material. Uh, sorry, the wrong object. Okay. So now that uh, iron 50% roughness material is applied, but obviously I can't really tell um, what it looks like and what it's doing because my uh, environment is just a sky dome. So what I really should do is give something a bit more reflective to kind of show me um, a little bit more realistic. So I'm going to go back to my environment window change my type to image based actually I'll turn off uh, fire just in case it throws a fit and uh, in my basically now my sky settings are now kind of um, not doing anything uh, neither is my son, my son is disabled and my image based lighting settings my background is type HDR image reflection, refraction and illumination are all set to same as background so they're going to do whatever the background does I'm going to open my um, map with this little folder icon here and find a more suitable image to use as my image based lighting. Okay, so now um, after much deliberation I've decided which um, high dynamic range image to use as my background. Um, it can take a while to decide, it's just when you've got a lot. Um, it's one of the SolidWorks ones and I've basically just got this um, white light and another white light above and also we've got these um, lights to provide a little bit of colour, a blue light and an orange light and it's a little bit dark and I could um, create a camera and fiddle about with my exposure settings but instead I'm just going to turn up the intensity a bit we might have to turn it up a lot, I need to turn it up to 10 before I really go anywhere I'm hoping that the um, orange and blue light are going to add a little bit of um, interest to the image and kind of help me see uh, exactly what I'm dealing with rather than just a boring monochrome image because of course this car does not actually contain that many coloured uh, materials in fact I think uh, the indicators are about as colourful as it gets um, on the exterior and the um, orange and blue light should help me to have a little look and see exactly what the material is doing. If they get too distracting I can turn it off but for now I'm going to leave it as it is. So now I've actually got um, some illumination in this scene. Um, I can see that indeed my uh, my material is working quite well. You know, a 50% uh, roughness is working pretty good. Um, if I wanted to change that, um, of course I could just you know go to Wizards again, Metal, uh, Iron, okay, and you know roughness maybe 25 instead, and really all it's done is changed the um, roughness values on these two um, BSDF layers so you know the roughness of 25 and then this BSDF which has a uh, opacity of 40 for the entire scene is half of the roughness that I set so if I don't have to go through the wizards again I can just kind of uh, turn that back up to 50 and the other one to 25 and get exactly the same material or I could you know fiddle with these um, individually and create my own material I don't have to stay within the presets of the wizard. That's the whole point of the wizard is that it gets you off to a good start but then you um, calibrate the material yourself to um, suit your needs. Okay, well that's um, that's a decent start and um, what I'm also going to do is just um, unhide all of these um, groups so that I can just have a look at exactly what my model looks like while I'm working on it. One of the um, easier materials which um, I will uh, kind of do just as a sort of formality uh, would be the glass because the glass which is currently consists of you know, the headlight bulbs, the windows and the headlight glass 
is uh, you could use a real glass but actually what I'm going to do is use architectural glass substitute which doesn't have any refraction in it it looks pretty much the same um, as long as you're not expecting any refraction in the glass because of the distance that I'm going to be viewing this car from uh, there almost certainly won't be and it saves on render time because Maxwell doesn't have to calculate the refraction so right click new material, select the material wizards, AGS and I'm just going to use the default values and there we go there's a material with reflection but no refraction so from a distance it appears pretty much exactly the same as glass but it takes a lot less time to render drag and drop that up onto the group and it will apply to everything in the group as well another material which is uh, pretty easy to make is um, would just be the reflective material that I need for for example the um, uh, side mirror reflective area and also the reflectors inside the um, headlights and the um, rear lights uh, so right click new material open it up and I'm not going to use a wizard this time I'm just going to make it myself uh, set the uh, for any you know really really reflective material uh, I'll lock the um, preview for this double click to refresh pop the roughness down to zero and put the ND up a bit to 30 force for nail and maybe you might want to change the reflectance zero value uh, hue saturation value mode pop this up to 225 and there you go there's your basic very very reflective material it doesn't it's it's not chrome um, you'll see chrome later on probably but it is a very cheap reflective material and apply that to the reflectors group and make sure to re-enable fire just in case you think you're going mad for a more realistic um, material, uh, chrome material for, ex for example the exhaust if I right click new material and um, go to wizards again wizard metal and there is a chromium uh, wizard uh, roughness. I don't want it to be zero because that's you know that's unrealistic. So I'm going to make it two because um, you know any more than that really, and it, you're going to show it a bit blurry. But two still looks reflective, but isn't um, absolutely perfect. The chromium wizard material is pretty much you know just what I made before, but there are you know key specific differences to make it just a little bit more um, a touch of realism, and then pop that on the exhaust. One thing that I should be doing that I'm sort of neglecting, um, I should be doing this as I'm going along, but I've forgotten a little bit, is uh, renaming these materials to exactly what they are, um, so that uh, you keep kind of keeping track of the materials you've already made. What you can do is rename them to uh, what they are applied to. For example, you know this top material is the one that's on our body and nothing else, so I could call it body material, but that's kind of defeating the purpose. You know it now it comes up in the object manager as body body I don't really need to know that I can already see that from here so what I prefer to rename them to is to the materials that they actually are you know kind of makes a bit more sense you select the material press return and then rename it um, iron wizard 50% roughness so now if I need a material which is the iron wizard 50% roughness I know I've already got one that's the point so now I've got my materials renamed to what they actually are so in the future they should be a bit more useful and earlier on I think I was saying about how um, by using groups you can move objects around and kind of change um, the material behavior one thing that I'd like to uh, do now in fact is change uh, the exhaust which I've already put a material to I want to. I want it in the same group as the wheel nuts because I want the wheel nuts to be chrome because, well, they may not be exactly chrome, but they would be chromish. You know, they'd be entirely reflective in in my mind. So I'm going to grab the exhaust, drag it down to the same group, drag it down to the bottom of the window, and the window should move, and um, put it in the nuts group. And just don't child it to anything, because that's a bit embarrassing and um, then what I can do is m if I click and drag the uh, material and actually drag it onto wheel nuts it'll apply it to everything next thing I'm going to want to do is the um, wheel rims themselves and for this I'll probably use a uh, an iron wizard but with less roughness so uh, make new material wizard metal uh, iron 
not gold, iron, but with less roughness, so say 25% roughness, and have a look at how that looks. And if that looks alright, then just apply it to the um, wheel rims, wherever they are. And again, um, select the material and return to rename it. And from there I can kind of have a look at the um, material and kind of think, is it too reflective? Maybe it is actually, but uh, I'll leave it for now and see what I think later on. A lot of the time I do, you know, obviously like to use um, reference images, but also a lot of the time, you know, it's it's personal taste more than anything. It depends what you're going for. I know that there are certain people out there who would absolutely totally prefer to make it um, exact uh, to the real, the actual car, but um, although in many respects that is our job, uh, a lot of the time, especially with, you know, models like this where you're just playing about, it's more what your personal taste says, what your eyes kind of say. Okay, next would be um, this kind of large object here which is kind of encompasses all of the um, trim of the car. Uh, right click new material open it up and wizards and again depending on your personal taste you might want to use a car paint type material for this but I don't I, I don't want that I kind of want it a bit um, more plastic than that so you know literally say plastic shininess uh, not very shiny kind of say 20% shininess roughness yeah I want it quite rough let's go the opposite to 20 so 20% shininess, 80% roughness. Uh, I don't want any saturation in it. Um, I do want it quite dark. Say in the 50s, that sounds about good. Have a little refresh. And it might be, you know, too matte for your taste. Just apply it and see what happens. Nope, wrong one. Now, I know you'll notice there that when you actually um, click and drag material, it won't just move it, it will actually copy it. That is a, uh, a frustrating at times, should we say. So just select the material and press the delete key to get rid of it. And if fire doesn't recognize that that's what you've done, just stop and start fire again. And it should wake up and realize that it, that object hasn't actually got material applied to it. So yeah, with this material I definitely think it's um, too matte, so I'm going to try again uh, with the wizard, wizard plastic, shininess 50, roughness 50, let's go in the middle, HSV, turn the saturation off, but the um, the colour is good, so you know, I'll go a similar-ish colour, you know, 50, it's 57. and now I can either refresh it here and have a better look or I can just look at it on the model and I would say that that's, um, that's getting close but actually on my one I do want it a little bit more shiny plastic, uh, let's go the full 75% shiny, only 25% rough uh, same with the material, sorry same with the colour Saturation. Yeah, that's more kind of what I would expect from that kind of material. It might be too shiny for the real world now, but you know, like I said, it's all kind of whatever you prefer. And again, renaming it to so I know kind of pretty much exactly what it is. So you know, mentioning the roughness, the shininess, and the color. And then the next kind of logical uh, material would be um, this one uh, on the front lower intake. Um, instead of you know modelling the hole where the air would go in, they kind of just modelled um, a plane to cover up the fact that the car isn't um, the interior itself isn't modelled, or not the interior, but the interior of this bay, not where the engine would be because DeLorean's mid-engine, but where the boot would be, um, or the trunk, depending on your language. Um, it's not modelled basically, so in, instead of a kind of letting you see that they just put a block there to seal everything off. 
so my next material is going to be just a really really basic material it's not going to be roughness 100 but uh, roughness 95 with a um, very dark colour even you know 24, 25 yeah probably 24 you can get away with that maybe even 22 you can't make it too dark because otherwise it's going to just uh, draw too much attention but 22 should be as low as you can go without kind of making it look silly and again renaming it to something which is sensible so I know what, it's, what it is if I need to use it again and in fact I'm thinking straight away that I do want to use it again and in fact I will just add the existing black diffuse material to the existing interior and just move the object which already has black diffuse applied to it into the existing group another thing you can do um, is just once you've actually applied uh, materials to these groups you just uh, close them down makes life a little bit easier collapse them that's what I mean uh, something else which I you know another case of deciding against your original um, grouping would be the these sort of wheel caps which um, are separate to the rims as a whole uh, I can't say exactly why but what I would quite like to do is actually um, have these in the same group as the wheel rims just because in all likelihood, you know, why would I apply a different material? Um, I don't ever see something where I would do that in my case and so to make life um, a bit easier I'm just going to take or sort of select the whole group and put it inside the um, wheel rims group and then uh, copy down the material. So now, but I because they're still in a group of their own, I still have the option to actually take them out if I feel it necessary. But for now, they can uh, go in with the wheel rims, and it can all be one material. Okay, the next material I'm going to do is going to be this uh, material for the front bumpers, and I know that uh, from experience that this material is a sort of a plastic-like. Um, the black trim but it's actually it matches the colour of the uh, stainless steel body or it roughly matches the colour so basically what I need is just um, a plastic uh, wizard again with a uh, grey material instead of a black so that's basically exactly what I'm going to make okay so this material is going to be um, one of those occasions where you really need to go and fine tune the material so I'm going to just uh, sort of try trial and error really um, until you get the colour right basically for now I'm going to say that I'm happy with that material I might well I'm not particularly happy with it to be honest but um, for now it will do until I can kind of figure out uh, exactly what would be better um, I think I just need to refer to pictures a little bit more for the glass which is going to be my um, next step uh, I ordinarily you know this DeLorean should have um, different coloured glass, you know, it should be uh, white for the reverse and orange for the indicators, red for the brake and rear lights, but in this case I'm just going to have it all red because I can't uh, be bothered to separate out the um, individual uh, bits of glass. So, make a new material and go to the uh, glass wizard and go to low grade and what this gives you is this um, glass with a hint of green and what I'm going to do is change the color from green drag the hue all the way to zero so it's nice and red and then I'm going to turn the attenuation down uh, maybe to just one centimeter one centimeter and apply the glass and see what happens really what's happening there is that you're seeing the um, the reflectors behind the glass so basically I know that this uh, attenuation is still too low, high, sorry. So basically I know this attenuation is still too high. So I change the mode to millimetres. And even maybe again micrometres, you know. Uh, 
And then put the attenuation up. So, I mean, a thousand micrometers is the equivalent of one millimeter. So, going to a thousand would, is unnecessary. So, try 500, try 250. You know, kind of just work out the color you want. 250 micrometers is actually looking quite nice. Yep, that's cool. I'm going to happy with that. Um, that's very nice. And uh, then just rename it Red Glass. And this is my. Um, bumper material which is kind of grey plastic and um, then what I want to do is first of all refresh the preview so that um, I know that I'm looking at the right thing in the uh, materials list and then right click the red glass and say clone material and this time I'm just going to change the uh, transmittance hue to orange so the hue be about 30 yeah be about 30 and apply it to the front indicator glass which is this down here and I can't really see because my um because my environment lighting is orange anyway, orange and blue. So what I'm going to do is quickly spin around my environment. If I go to the environment window, background offset 180, should spin around the uh, white lights to the front, and yeah, that's it's working kind of nice. Yep, that's definitely good enough for me. So again, just uh, rename that orange glass, and phew, might as well leave the lights there to be honest something different and so next uh, I might as well just work down the list now um, rear license plate now ordinarily this license plate should either say out of time or it should be just a barcode depending on what m movie you're watching but for this I'm just gonna make a nice quick um, material I'm gonna use instead of the plastic material I'm actually just gonna use the greasy material and um, make it a nice uh, white um, uh, so change it to HSV and use a value of 225 it's the highest you should really go and so it's kind of just a nice white material um, because I could you know apply a texture to it but you know, not really worth it for this model So it's just kind of filled with a material. I could also, um, if I wanted to, I could either hide the rear license plate altogether, but you know it's going to leave a great big hole in my car. So I don't really want to do that. But what I could also do is use the same black trim material, so it kind of hides it in that regard. That might be a little bit of a better idea. I don't know. No, I'm, I'm going to stick with my original plan, give it its own um, material because, you know, it's it's worth it to see that it's there, to be honest. Okay, moving down the list, next is the wipers and also this tiny little bit of trim down here. Uh, they're just going to be, you know, a nice shiny black, so new material. Uh, I'm going to use the plastic instead of the greasy uh, they're going to be pretty shiny, you know, 50%, um, but not rough. Get rid of the saturation and put that down a little bit. Not too low, you know, about a third of the way. It might need to be a bit darker than that, actually, but um, we'll see what it looks like when it's actually applied. Yeah, I'm going to go darker than that. Yeah, it's better. And then click and drag the colour to the lower one. It shouldn't really make much difference, but just in case. And also, maybe on the glass material, the orange glass, might just want to turn that attenuation down a bit. Brighten up the front glass. But it's... no.
Oh, sorry, I turned the attenuation up. Okay, next is going to be the brake discs, and for this, I'm just going to use. Uh, well, first of all, spin it around to a place where you can really see it. I'm going to have to uh, put my offset back at zero. And then a new material, open it up, wizard, metal, iron, okay, roughness of 80, because brake discs are, you know, really rough, and then just apply it. And, you know, they're not actually going to be seen that much anyway, so as long as it's something reasonably good, um, for the purposes of this tutorial I'm going to leave it at that. Um, in this model I'm not going to be staring up close and personal uh, obviously you know they're actually just um, modeled cylinders anyway uh, well they're not cylinders they're toruses or rings whatever you want to call them um, <laughs> so they don't have any cooling holds or anything like that so you're not going to look at them up close for the brake calipers just um, to show you how to do it um, I'm going to import a material instead of actually making one from the wizard, so right click, import MXM, and in your uh, directory there should be car paint grey, it should come included with Maxwell Studio, or just Maxwell in general. So um, open up that, and it might ask you to select the opening mode, uh, keep as reference or embed, I'm going to pick embed just so I can edit it if I need to, and then just apply that to the brake calipers. <clears throat> and finally, for the tyres, what I've done is imported a model, uh, sorry, a material that I've downloaded from uh, resources.maxwellrender.com. Here it is, uh, resources.maxwellrender.com, and log in, register, log in, whatever. Search for rubber, and the one I've used is actually um, HT Rubber Black One by Heeltom. Heeltom is a legend. I absolutely love him, and his all of his work. And this is one of the materials he's kindly uploaded. Uh, Download it and just apply it, and it's a it's a great rubber. You know uh, these tires aren't actually modelled with a tread, so they're not going to be um, looked at in any close detail. So in other words, you might as well just use a a reasonably cheap rubber material. Okay, guys, I hope this has been useful. In future vids, I will be looking at the this particular model again and rendering it in a variety of different ways, uh, studio lighting and exterior compositing. So please do check back for that later. Thank you very much, see you again soon. For more information about Maxwell Render training at the University of Brighton Centre for Design Technology, email maxwellrenderbrightoncdt at gmail.com.